it's April wrap-up time, and is it just me, guys, or can anyone else believe that it's already May? I mean, what has happened to 2014 already? We're almost halfway through! It seems that the older I get, the quicker the years fly by. When I was younger, a year took forever. It was a long, long wait for Fourth of July, and Thanksgiving, and my birthday, and New Year's, and now it's just like January, and it's December before you know it. So, this month, I finished off quite a few books. I am very, very proud of myself. First of all, I finished Odd Thomas by Dean Koontz, and I finished the first book of The Encourageable Children of Ashton Place, The Mysterious Howling, on audiobook, which was a really, really fun experience. I also finished The Stone of Ahala by Maggie Brooks. This was a really fun book. I gave it, I think, four stars, and you can find my review of it on Goodreads. I also finished book two of The Encourageable Children of Ashton Place, The Hidden Gallery, also on audiobook, as you can probably tell. This was... Uh, this, this series is just so much fun. It, it's somewhere between uh, a Jane Austen and like an E. Nesbitt or um, an, Edw an Edward Eager story. It's really fun. It's like a classic children's fantasy, but the narrator has like like a sense of propriety and it's just, I don't know, it's really fun, it's really entertaining, and there's actually quite an entertaining mystery going along with it. So I'm really excited to read the third book, and I will have to read it because my library doesn't have it on audiobook, and I'm kind of really disappointed because I was really enjoying listening to these, but I really have to know what's happening next, so I have to grab that. I also read a non-fiction book this month, a biography to be specific, Mary Poppins She Wrote, the Life of P.L. Travers by Ver Valerie Lawson, and yes, I read this only because I was really looking forward to seeing Saving Mr. Banks. I did read Mary Poppins, I think it was last year, because I wanted to do a movie-to-book comparison, and also because I went and saw the play. And I actually did not enjoy the book that much, so I guess it's not that big of a surprise that I didn't totally enjoy this biography. I mean, I really only read it because I wanted to read about P.L. Travers and her clash with Walt Disney over the making of the movie, and it was a really short section, and this author, Valerie Lawson, doesn't seem to have a very high opinion of Walt Disney, and me being like a total Walt Disney fan, that really irritated me. It was interesting to know all of the stuff from the biography when I did watch Saving Mr. Banks, but I far preferred the movie of Saving Mr. Banks. It does make me wonder just how factually accurate the movie was, because I did notice a couple of discrepancies from this biography to the stuff that happened in the movie, and so I'm wondering just like how factually accurate it is, but it's a really good movie. It was a, it was a beautiful mu movie. Um, I would definitely recommend it to anybody who has any interest in Walt Disney or Mary Poppins or the making of it, but um, yeah, I definitely preferred the movie. And I did only give this book three stars because of um, the issues of too many facts that I felt were unrelated. <sighs> now for the piece de resistance. The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society by Mary Ann Schaefer and Annie Burrows. Oh my goodness, this was the best book that I have read in ages, and I don't know what what exactly about it I loved so much. It was just oh, such a beautiful and wonderful book. Uh, there were a couple of things in this book that did irritate me on, like, my own personal values and stuff, so there were a couple of things in there that I, I really didn't like. So that's the reason why it only got four stars, but on the whole, the story is just magnificent and beautiful, and I love the way it's written. It's all written through letters and telegrams between all the different characters. Um, it's not as restricting as that kind of format would sound, because uh, Schaefer and Barrows, they really give you everything that you are craving in the story. They let you see all of the things that you want to see through the letters and stuff. So they were very clever about using that format. And it's just a really, really magnificent book. Definitely check out my review of that one. Um, I did a video review of this last Wednesday, so I'll link that below. Uh, I just finished listening to The Convenient Marriage by Georgette Heyer. This was an abridged audiobook, which is one reason why I haven't picked it up yet. It's a Regency romance. It was an abridged book. I have vowed long ago never to touch an abridged book if I can avoid it, and the one reason that I decided to actually listen to this instead of picking up an unabridged copy of the book is right here. This book is read by Richard Armitage, and I just could not resist that because I think he's a great actor, but he also has like the really great voice. 
uh, the deep English voice, and he does a really excellent job narrating this. It's not just because he has a really great voice, but he's actually a really good narrator, and he did voices for all of the characters, and it cracked me up at first, but he, I, I actually forgot who was narrating it after a while because just it was a really good narration of the book. And I started picturing uh, just the voices as the different characters instead of Richard Armitage doing voices for different characters, if that makes any sense. So this was a really good one. And I gave it four stars. Now, I had heard about this book on uh, Epic Reads, I believe. They featured this on one of their uh, Tea Times, which are really fun videos if you haven't checked them out. So um, everybody was really excited about this book, and I was totally intrigued because it's like really, it's supposed to be a really dark and gritty young adult novel about um, kind of a homicidal Land of Oz and how Dorothy eventually turned into the bad guy. And I was really intrigued because I've been leaning towards uh, some darker material reading-wise lately. So this is Dorothy Must Die by Danielle Page, and I'm sure a lot of people here on booktube know about this because everybody's talking about it right now. Unfortunately, I did not get very far into this book. I only got about 100 pages in because there was a lot of swearing, and that's just not something that I find acceptable in books, so I just eventually stopped reading it. So here's my reading goals chart, and let's see here. I read uh, On to Odd Thomas, that was an adult fiction, and The Convenient Marriage, and The Guarantee Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society, and then I also read The Mary Poppins She Wrote, which was my first biography of the year. So I'm doing really well on my goals so far. Three adult fiction, two nonfiction, one biography, and one finished series. Yahoo! I'm also really glad because uh, I thought I was way behind on my 2014 reading goal of 100 books this year, but um, at some point I hit 32 books uh, last month, and apparently that means I'm right on track to finish my 100 books this year, so I'm really excited and I'm going to try keeping up with that. As for my TBR for May, Ellie over at Booking the Trend has said she's going to do a whole like classic reading month for May and see how many classics she can read. Um, I believe she's doing this with um, at least one friend, a couple of friends. She's inviting everybody to join along who wants to. And I realized that I have a ton of classics on my 2014 to read list, so I'm going to try and do that. Um, I'm in the middle of a couple of books right now. I've got um, one by Kevin J. Anderson called The Dragon Business. I've got um, this one right here. Uh, the Crystal Bridge, The Lost Shards, book one by Charlie Pulsifer, which has a marvelously beautiful cover, and I'm really enjoying right now. And then, so I picked up uh, the audiobook of Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell because I just watched this miniseries and now I want to read all of the books that it was based on. And so this is what I'm going to start with for the classics is Cranford. And then once I finish the books that I'm kind of in the middle of right now, I'm going to try and move on to more classics. Uh, some Jules Verne, some Mark Twain, more Elizabeth Gaskell because I'm, yeah, I really want to read all of her stuff right now. And probably some H.G. Wells because I have never read any of his stuff. So, that is what I am up to and what I have been up to. What about you guys?